Our Father, I bless your name, I praise your mercy, I praise your power. Our Father, I look up unto heaven, the righteous Father. I pray, have your way in the midst of your people. Father, wherever two or three are gathered in your name, Father, have your way. I pray, review your word. Teach us your word. For the entrance of your word, give it light. Lady, I pray by the power of your word, enlighten us. Make us to see the promises written concerning us and claim them and apply them in our lives and be blessed in Jesus' name. I pray for salvation of everyone. I pray for restoration of everyone. I pray for sanctification of everyone. I pray that your spiritual power shall come upon everyone hearing from me. I pray and decree that no one that is here and shall be here today I will go by the same. Father, bless them variously to your glory in Jesus' name. Daddy, as I speak your word, I pray that the benefit of your word shall be my portion. And the portion of as many hearing me all over the world. Let them be blessed through your word. And open the eyes of everyone to know the promises. To know everything, everything concerning us. And claim them and be blessed in Jesus name. I cover here with the blood of Jesus. As the Holy Ghost to take over. Father, thank you very, very much. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Turn your Bible to Joshua chapter 1. I read from verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest Observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, from verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, Blessed shall that be in the city. Blessed shall that be in the field. Now, look at James chapter 1, verse 22. But be it doers of the world, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. In James chapter 2, verse 12, so speak ye, and so do. As they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For this chapter, some verses I'm bringing to you the topic acting upon his word. Acting upon his word. Everyone should see every word of God as a potential treasure to be harvested in due time. And the harvest is based on the time of your needs. 
none of God's word can be wasted. None of his word shall fail. None of his word shall be void of blessings. None of his word shall be void of life. His word is truth. His word is power. His word is life. No wonder the Bible says, in the Deuteronomy where we read 28 verse 1. Let's read it again. The Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. I want you to take note. His word, his commandments, is full of life and blessings. We should read it, we should keep to it, we should, we should act upon it, we shall see the benefit, we shall be blessed above others. So, we should take heed to his word because every promise of God must be fulfilled. Every word of God must come to pass. Every word of God is full of blessings. Every word of God is full of life. If you look at the book of John chapter 6 verse 63, John chapter 6. I read verse 63. And it reads, It is a spirit that quickness. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. This word is spirit, is life. And this word will surely be fulfilled. In Matthew chapter 24, I read verse 35, Matthew 24. Look at your Bible, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And so take note, every promises of God, every word of God must be fulfilled. In Psalm 119 and verse 89, Psalm 119, and verse 8 9. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. I want to let you know this word cannot be distorted. This word cannot be changed by any man. This word, if you must revoke it, then you will enter heaven and revoke it. And so long you cannot enter heaven and do it. This word is sure. This word shall be fulfilled. This word is unchanging. This word is everlasting. Heaven and earth shall pass away. The word of God shall never pass away. It shall never go unfulfilled. Study. Take counsel. Take correction from God through his word. Now, look at this place in the Bible. In Isaiah chapter 46, Isaiah chapter 46, I read from verse 10. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. Calling a rebellious bed from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yeah, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I proposed it. I will also do it. Take note. Whatever God said, he will do it. Whatever God has proposed, he will do it. Whatever God has uttered from his mouth, has spoken from his mouth, it must surely come to pass. In fact, his counsel shall stand. So, we should take heed to the word of God 
and the counsel therein and have a wonderful and blessed life and make heaven at last. In First Timothy chapter 4, reading verse 12, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come, give attendance to reading, exhortation, to doctrine, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, meditate upon these things, give thyself holy to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So, take note. This word of God, as you study it, apply in your life, you shall benefit therein. And the benefit shall be to you and to those hearing you. In fact, you will be a blessing to the people. Haven't studied, understood, and they claim the promises and live your life according to this world. You shall be a blessing to people around you. So, the word of God is profitable in all things. We must know it. We must claim it, the promises, and we must act upon it. And we shall be blessed. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's see. Second Timothy chapter 3. I read from verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So, this word is for correction, for reproof. This word is for instruction in righteousness. And when you give yourself to it as a minister, as a child of God, it makes you perfect. It makes you to be equipped for good works. And as a result, you shall be a blessed person. As a result, you will not make mistakes. As a result, you will be a blessing to people. And so, study the word of God. Take notes. We should read it always to know everything concerning us. To know the promises written concerning us. And then claim them and act upon them. It shall surely come to pass. At Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Look at the Bible. Chapter 34. I read from verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read no one of this chapter. No shall want her met, for my mouth it has commanded, and his spirit it has gathered them. Take note. Seek for the word of God, the book of the Lord, and read. And I suppose you should know that this is the book of the Lord, the Bible. And we're commanded not to buy it. And just, you know, carry it all around. The Bible says you should look for it. You should read it. And then, and you shall claim the promises. Look at that place. It said, seek ye out the book of the Lord. And read, no one of these shall fail. All that God has spoken, none of them shall fail. It shall surely come to pass. And look at that place. Nor shall want her mate. This work must be fulfilled. 
For my mouth, it has commanded. God has commanded it. And his spirit, it has gathered. So long God has spoken it. The spirit of God will bring it to pass. And that's why I say, seek out for this book and read it. Now, verse 17. And he has cast the lot for them. And his hand has divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. As God has spoken this word, I want to let you know, it's for me, it's for you, it's for all generation. As we go on to claim these promises from our generation, the past, and as we claim it our own generation, our generation to come, it will surely come to pass. There is no time this world shall not be real. As long as we are still here, this world must be fulfilled. Even if the next generation comes, if Jesus tarries, this world remains everlasting. Therefore, we must read it. That's what it here we have been told, seek out for it, read it. None of them shall fail. What God said will surely come to pass. That's why, if you look at this place in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, when the event was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word. And he all that were sick. Now look at verse 17. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. The point is, Jesus did exactly what was written concerning him. Do you know what I'm reading concerning you? So that you can act upon it. I'm assuring you, it will surely come to pass. Jesus acted as it was written concerning him. According to the book of Isaiah chapter 53, Jesus acted upon that word. Now, let's find out. The word that Jesus acted upon in Verse 17 again, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Isaiah 53, from verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our, our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Jesus acted upon this world. And as he acted upon this world, all the people that had him speaking, all of them were healed. Because he acted upon what was written concerning him. I want to let you know, Every word of God belongs to us. Every promise belongs to us. As we act upon these promises, it shall surely come to pass. So, we should know, what is it that God has spoken concerning us? Whatever God said, will surely come to pass. In Isaiah chapter 55, I read verse 11. Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Whatever God said concerning anything, concerning you, it must surely come to pass. He shall never return to God empty. He shall never return to God void. As long as God has spoken it, it will surely be fulfilled. That's the word of God for you. So we shall consider this message under the flowing subheading. One, the reasons. Certainty of his word and examples. Two, our expected response and the benefit. Let's go to point number one. 
the reasons, certain to of his word and example. Many believers do not know the value of the word of God. And as a result, do not delight in reading the word, meditating upon the word, and claiming his promises. Many believers do not know the value of the word of God. And as a result, do not delight in reading the word, meditating upon the word, and claiming its promises. Yet, his word is a treasure, and in fact, our treasure. And covenant with God, which cannot or never be altered, it is a promise that God has made with us. It must surely come to pass. It must be fulfilled. So it is our treasure. Everything concerning the word of God will surely come to pass. Whatever God has spoken must be fulfilled. Take note. It can never be altered. And those people who do not know about this, yet they claim to be children of God, and I select the word of God. They suffer for lack of knowledge. No wonder Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, let's read. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you do not know this truth, when you do not know the value of the word of God, when you, when you do not know the, the benefit of the word of God, if you do not know the truth about the word of God, I want to let you know, you cannot benefit from it, and rather, that person will be destroyed when you lack knowledge of this word. And that's why he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You have to know what is written concerning you. You have to know the promises of God that has spoken through his word concerning you. You have to know the power of the word of God. And as you know, I act upon it and claim it. I'm assuring you, you shall do great exploit in Jesus' name. Amen. So take heed to the word of God. If you look at the book of John 8, I must start it too. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. If you don't know the truth concerning you, the truth of the word of God concerning others, if you don't know the truth of the word of God in any area of your life, I want to let you know, you cannot prosper in that area. Instead of being prosperous, you rather will hit a kind of destruction. Instead of making progress, you find yourself losing because of lack of the knowledge of the world of God. And when you do not know the word of God, take note. When you do not know the word of God, you cannot do much exploit as a child of God. Others may be blessed, but you cannot. The Bible said concerning him that it might be fulfilled of that which was written concerning him and that it might be fulfilled. Jesus acted upon it and then that thing which was written upon him was fulfilled. Something has been written concerning you. If you don't know about it, you don't act upon it, it cannot be fulfilled in your life. What it lead you is to, you know, destruction. It will lead you to Instead of benefiting therein, it will lead you into not having anything. Lack of knowledge brings destruction. No wonder the Bible said in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32, in stanza B, it said, Those that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. When you know, it makes you to be strong, it makes you to go ahead and claim it and make use and be a blessed person. And be a blessing to people. Those that do know their God, they shall exploit this word of God. 
read the word and know the word so that you are profiting from the world will be a blessing to people around you and unto you so take note we should read we should study the bible in second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 it reads second timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth take note study to show yourself a proof unto God rightly dividing the work, word of God a workman that needed not to be ashamed when you know this word I want to let you know you shall be full of faith you shall have boldness you shall never be ashamed therefore study so you can know and so that instead of you being a reproach, you will be a blessing to those that hear you. So try to know the word by studying it day and night. And be acquainted with all that have been written concerning you, concerning everything. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Take note of that. How many scriptures? All scriptures. All. All scriptures is by inspiration of God. All scriptures. Is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Take note all, without exception. Every word of God is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, that the man of God will be thoroughly furnished on the good works. So do not neglect the word of God. You should know them and then stand by them and live your Christian life, you shall be a blessing to others. You shall be a blessing to the whole world. So, let's study the Bible. In John chapter 13, verse 15. John chapter 13, and verse 15. And I read, For I give you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very, very nice son to you. The son is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent, greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. If you know these things, you should know it. You should know the word of God. You should know the teachings of Christ concerning everything. You should know the teaching of the word of God concerning everything. And if you know these things, happy are you. If you do them, happy are you. If you act upon them, you shall be blessed. And you shall be a blessing to people. And so, take note. If you want to be a blessed child of God, act upon the word of the Lord. Go ahead and practicalize it. Go ahead and apply it in every area of your life you will be a blessed person. We should know that his word is him. The word of God is God. And we should also know that his word is his will. His will that he has written for me and for you. There is something you need to understand. When a father that is getting old and then and is ready to go, he will write we for the children. And after writing the we, he will hand it a legal practitioner. And whatsoever he has written concerning the first son or second son or third son, all the children. 
When the father must have gone, the legal practitioner will call the people, all the children together, and say, your father has written something concerning you. And what your father has written concerning you, I want to read it to your understanding. And he says, so, so, and so, you have that building there. Uh, it's for the first son. So, so, and so, you have that money there. You have that property there. You have that property there. Now, whenever that will is read, even if that son before had no money from that moment, that property or that money belongs to him. But so long he doesn't know this will, it doesn't belong to him, he doesn't have it. Even though it is written concerning him and it is kept for him, as long as he has no knowledge of it, he will still be very poor, suffering until the will is read. Now, take notes. Christ, our God, has written the will for me and for you by the Holy Spirit. And it is the word of God. Everything written here concerns you. It belongs to you. If you don't know it, you'll be suffering. If you don't know it, you might be crying and weeping. And you will not take what belongs to you. But once you know it and claim it and act upon it, you will see the reality. It will surely come to pass. So, it is written concerning us. Every word of God. And look at this place. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Look at verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He take it away the first. That he may establish the second. The point is, Jesus came into the world to do the will of God. And for him to do the will of God, he must know the word of God. What is written concerning him. What is written, what God has written concerning every matter. And then when he acts and do accordingly, he will be a blessing to everyone. Likewise me and you. We must not do our own will, but the will of him that sent us. So, once God has spoken, it must be fulfilled. Whatever God has spoken concerning me, concerning you, concerning heaven, concerning earth, concerning everything, it must be fulfilled. That is will. It must surely come to pass. Isaiah chapter 46 says, in chapter 46, verse 10, it says, and I read, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, say, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure, my counsel, every word that spoken shall stand. It shall not be broken. It must surely come to pass. So, if you look at verse 11, calling the revenant's bed from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country, yeah, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it, I will also do it. Whatever God said, he will bring it to pass. It will never go unfulfilled. No wonder what God has determined shall be done. Nothing can revoke his word. Nothing can hinder his word. Whatever he said will surely come to pass. Now look at Psalm 89. I read verse 34 and 35. It reads... My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. 
Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. Every promise God has made to me to you, it will surely come to pass. All the promises in the Bible, all of them shall be fulfilled. And they are the covenant that God has made with us. And God can never alter it. And whatever God has spoken concerning us, he watches over it to bring it to pass. So, he cannot lie. He cannot change. He cannot alter his word. That's why it is a sure promise. And it will surely come to pass. What do you need to do? You should know it. You should claim it. You should act upon it. My friend, if you act upon the world, you will discover how God is real. If you will discover the certainty of his power, of his word, that it cannot be broken. If many people that today, and they serve the Lord, and they have not realized what God has said concerning them, it is because they do not know the power the certainty of his word. And they refuse to claim it and act upon it. That's why they're suffering. But if you hold on any word of God that is really concerning you and begin to, you know, act upon it, you will see the wonders of God. Praise the Lord. And you see the reality of his promises that it must surely come to pass. You don't need to struggle. You see some people, they think they know. Some people, they think, you know, they are wise. And so, when they come across the promise of God, they disdain it, they despise it. They look down upon it, they say, well, I know it, I read it before. My friend, that word you know and, and, and read before is the same from the beginning to today. And those who claim it, it worked for them. And it was for me. Praise the Lord. So, you should know it. That word is powerful. That word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's like, I, have to, I have had experience with the word of God. And because of that, I can assure you the word of God is powerful. I remember some years ago that I went on, you know, on follow-up. And coming back home, a lot of, you know, activities of the enemy in the night. And they gang up in the dream. And what I have, does says the Lord, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And all those kingdoms that gathered, all those men, all those terrible you know, beings, all of them everywhere began to, in fact, the, the hopeless vibrated and quaked, and all of them became still. When they are trying to rise again, he said, does says the Lord, no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Everywhere shook the foundation. And every one of them is too still. As they try to organize again, he said, Thus says the Lord, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And all of them bow down. And I walk out of the place and wake up. You can see how effective the word of God is. When the word is spoken, it pierced through every hurdle and achieved the purpose. That's why you should stand upon this wall. You should speak what is concerning you. Claim it. It will surely come to pass. In the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. It says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who had fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. What are the two immutable things? His oath and his word. Whatever oath God has taken, it must fulfill Whatever promises God has made through his word, it must surely come to pass. And it is immutable, and it must surely come to pass. So take note of that. And in Titus chapter 1 verse 2, Titus 
chapter 1, I read verse 2. And it reads, chapter 1, verse 2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Take note, God that cannot lie. That is title. God that cannot lie. Whatever he said is truth. It must surely come to pass. So, his word will surely come to pass or be fulfilled, for he cannot lie, nor break his covenant or utter his word. And as many who relied upon his word in time past were never disappointed, rather, his word has ever been fulfilled in their lives. And even in the life of all the believers, the word of God has never disappointed those who trusted it. it all, from all generations, those who trusted and believed and acted upon the world, it came to pass. Those who believed the world, it came to pass. If you look at the book of Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 17, I read verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham, and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God stuck with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. But thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings that come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee. And to thy seed after the take note. In this place, God made it clear to Abraham that his covenant shall stand, that he shall be a father of many nations. And he told him from that day, change your name. Now begin to answer Abraham instead of Abraham. And Abraham means father of many nations. And from that day, Abraham did not consider his body being weak and old. Neither did he consider the body of Sarah being weak and old. They started answering father of many nations, meaning acting upon his word, upon the word of the Lord. Somebody must have said, what a foolish thing that me at this old age and my wife have no, have entered menopause, how can we begin to answer mother of many nations from Sarai to Sarah and from Abraham to Abraham? How can we do? What will the people say? I want to find out from you. Did it come to pass? Yes, yes it came to pass. Because they acted upon the word of God. If you have all that time you have been following in this teaching, you have not come to reality or what or to understand of what we are saying, please mark this place. Abraham changed his name from Abraham to Abraham at old age, acting upon the word of the Lord. There is no man has ever acted upon his word. I'm get disappointed because God cannot lie. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 10. Genesis 18, I must ten. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarai were old and were stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. 
she has stopped seeing her period. She has entered menopause. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, said, After I am once old, shall I have pleasure in my Lord, being old also. They were too old, and they don't have any pleasure again. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Say, Shall I of a short tea bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Can you see it? God said, Why did you laugh? Why is it that you laugh? The woman was considering the weakness. She has passed age. The husband has passed age. She cannot see her menopause anymore. And then she slapped because it was impossible. And when she laughed, God saw it and came down and said, Why did you laugh? He said, According to the time of life, I will return. And Sarah shall have a son, shall bear a son. And I want to let you know, at a pointed time, it happened. For God is God. He said to them, is there anything to have for the Lord? That is a pointed time. When it comes, you, Sarah, will shall have a son. Remember? By this time, God has changed their name to Abraham to Abraham, from Sarai to Sarah. Many father of many nations, a mother of many nations. And at this point in time, when the Lord came down, he saw that these people, he saw that Sarah has begun to doubt because Sarah was looking at her body. At their old age, and using her mental knowledge, and he took her away from the promises of God, from the faith in God. And that's what so many people are doing now. They look at themselves, they're not looking at the word of God, they're not acting upon the promise of God. They began to consider that, but they consider could it be possible? And the Lord is asking, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? There is an appointed time. When he come, the Lord will fulfill his word. Just keep on acting upon his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Something happened. Abraham acted upon the word. And God Almighty, the covenant keeping God, he made that word to come to pass. Let's see how Abraham acted in Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I read from verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and called those things which be not as though they were, who against hope, believing hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be, and be not weak in faith. What did he do? He considered not his own body, now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not. And the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Abraham was strong in faith. Abraham was praising God, thanking God that God has spoken and his word will surely come to pass. He was not looking at his body as Sarah did. 
He was not considering their age. My brothers and sisters, my friend that is hearing me now, as he acted upon the word of the Lord, it came to pass. The child of promise came. Now, there is something you need to understand. As many of you that are children of Abraham, you are children of faith. And if you are children of faith, God expected you to live by faith and not by sight. No wonder the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, it said, we walk by faith and not by sight. If you be truly a child of God, no matter the situation, act upon the word of the Lord. Don't look at people. Don't look at their condition. Don't look at the situation. What God said, believe it and act upon that word. Glorify him, thank him for his promise that surely come to pass. In fact, let me advise you as you are hearing me now. If there is anything you need in life and it appears that that thing you know is impossible and there is no way you can get it look for the word of God where God has made the promise in the word of God who lay hold on it claim it and begin to praise God thank him for doing it for you claim that word I want to let you know in a short time you will see that word coming to pass because he cannot alter his word. is the covenant keeping God. Let me give you an example. If you are sick, remember, by his stripe, we are healed. Continue to claim that promise. You will see that that sickness will disappear. Because the word is sharper than two edges. So it's quick and powerful. It pierces the bones and marrow. It is a good everything which God said. Therefore, act upon the word. Please read the Bible. Know what is written concerning you. Claim it and give glory to God. You will see it coming to pass. Don't forget. Remember, when God made promise unto the children of Israel and is bringing them out of Egypt, my friends, when the word came to them, Moses and Aaron acted upon the world. They visited Pharaoh and began to announce, Thus says the Lord, let my people go, that they may serve in the wilderness. Now, if Moses, when the world came, and Moses said, who will he go to Pharaoh? Me. Do you want me to die? And Moses began to question, how can you send me to Pharaoh? Which, which weapon? How can I meet Pharaoh? If you argued like that, they will die in Egypt. But he made a step and then announced the freedom, announced the independence of his people, and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, I don't know your God. Neither will I let you go. Well, God said, That is my servant has acted upon my word. Now trouble for you. Praise the Lord. The rest belongs to him, God. And God said, go back to Pharaoh. Tell him, let my people go. You see, acting upon the word of God will make you to do great exploit, to be a blessing to your generation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That takes us to point number two. Our expected response and the benefit. Everyone especially those who are born again, believers in Christ Jesus, should know that we have a will written by our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Remember, if you look at this place in the Bible, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's read. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I read verse 16. All scripture, take note, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, 
for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So, all scriptures are written for our learning, for our correction, for instruction. And all scriptures are written that we might read and we might explore it to be perfect, to be thoroughly furnished. And so, this is the way written by our Father for me and for you. And we must read it to get what belongs to us and act upon his word. Take note of that. If you look at Joshua chapter 1, no wonder. Joshua chapter 1, Joshua was told what to do when he took over the leadership from Moses. I read verse 7 again. Only be that strong. And be very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. So, you have been told to read it, to meditate upon it, and uh, that we might prosper. Meditate upon this world. So that we might be prosperous and have good success. So, as we read this word, this is the way which I've been documenting for us. Make sure you meditate it upon it and act upon it. You will prosper and have good success. That's exactly what Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16 is telling us. Seek out for the book of, book of the Lord and read. Not shall want her met. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, he said, Look, I come in the volume of book, it is written of me to do thy will. Oh God, let us know. That we are not here to do our will. We are not here, you know, to struggle. We are here to know what is written upon or concerning us and act upon it and claim it and begin to act upon it. It will surely come to pass. So whatever he has spoken concerning us has been written in the word of God. And we should study the word of God to know those things and claim them. We should study the word of God and do them. No child of God should behave as if though he or she has nothing. That is lack of knowledge. Any child of God that is saying, I have nothing, that child of God is making God a liar. Any child of God that is a beggar, oh, what a pity. Any child of God and you see today, and it's, you know, every time he's telling you he's sick, he, you know, he doesn't know what to do again, he doesn't have anything. That is a child of God without knowledge. And which knowledge? The word of God. We are not carnal men and women. We are not those who see before we believe. We are those who believe before we see. We are those who have things spiritual stored in us. We are not those who are, you know, those who struggle and struggle and get this and get that. We are those that live and walk by faith. Let me tell you, after this preaching, please search your Bible. Any promises of what you want God to do, hold on it and act upon it. Act upon it consistently. No matter the situation, no matter the wave, you will see that it will surely come to pass. I want to let you know, they have delivered many things in the hand. All things. Look at the book of Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Please, let's read. Let's hear the testimony and confession of Paul the apostle. So that we too can learn and also confess positively on whatsoever we're looking for. If you look at verse 9, as unknown, yet well known. As dying, 
and behold, we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing all things. How many? All. See, as Paul possess all things, I possess all things, you possess all things, all you need to do is look at the promise of God, claim what belongs to you, act upon it, you will see it coming to pass. Instead of con making negative confession, confess what God said concerning you. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. I want to let you know, as a child of God, but my God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? Jesus was made poor that you might be rich. You are rich. By his stripe, we are healed. Oh, you are healed. Don't confess that you are, you are dying, oh, you are dying, oh. So you can attract people's pity, attract pastor's pity, attract everybody's pity. My friend, that, that, that will bring you to death. Are you hearing me? Confess that what the Lord said by his stripe, what happened? I'm not hearing you again. Yes, of course. That is a lot. That is a possession. That is the will concerning you. By his stripe, I am healed. Instead of confessing death, said we shall not die, but live and declare the works of God. Instead of confessing your limitations, say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I don't know what I'm passing through. Stop making negative confession. Instead of saying you are barren, say that there shall be no barren. That's what the Lord said among us. I am not barren. Praise the Lord. Stop making negative confession. Say you are poor. You are poor and poor as church rats. I don't know how church rats used to be poor. Now listen to me. It is lack of knowledge. You have all things. So I don't know what you are saying. Now look at the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10. Please say what the word of God says concerning you. You shall be a blessed person. In Luke chapter 10. I read verse 19. And it reads. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall have any means hurt you. Oh my God, he see you, nothing shall have any means hurt you. Amen. They gave you food in the dream. When you wake up, thank God for that food and cancel it. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, they shoot you in the dream or in the physical. Remember that nothing shall have any means hurt you. Are you hearing me? Any hand that rises against you shall wither for your sake. Are you hearing me? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. If God be for me, who can be against me? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not always be full of faith and full of the promises of God, full of what God said concerning you. You shall be a stronger believer. If you look at verse 20, we standing in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven are you a believer your names are written in heaven and therefore always declare who you are and declare your Lord don't say, I don't know whether you're a believer or not. I don't know whether you're a child of God. Don't say that. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Always tell them, your name, my name is written in heaven. Never you join people to say, you don't know whether you're born again or not. You don't know whether you're a Christian and you're dying, you know, you're an unbeliever. Don't say that. Rejoice. Because you believe that your names are written in heaven. That be a consolation, a comfort. Quote it. In Luke chapter 15, verse 31. Son, thou art ever with me, and all I have is thine. How many? All oh, from A to Z. Why are you complaining and murmuring? Say what God says. 
All that belongs to my father in heaven belongs to me. I'm not a poor man. I'm not sick. I shall fulfill my years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. What is your mind for? You are born again, you are a child of God, and endeavor to live right. Whatever you are looking for, God will give it to you. Amen. As I draw conclusion, remember, if you are not a child of God, you can lay hold on the wheel. Because you're a stranger. There is no way you can come to my house or come to me and say, eh, uh, I'm your biological child. I, I, I don't know you. So there was no day I gave part to a person like you. They said, You come and told me, You are my spiritual child. Praise the Lord. So if you say that, I will say, No, I don't know you. That you are a biological child to me. So because I don't know the day that uh, my wife took in and buried you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you're a stranger, I cannot put you in the wheel. If I'm writing my wheel, I will only write the wheel for the children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. God is our Father, and we are His sons and daughters. He has written a wheel concerning us. And we shall lay hand on it and claim it, and it shall be ours. Praise the Lord. Now, if you want to be among the partakers of this, all these blessings which God has written in the will, in the word of God, what you should do is you repent of your sins and confess them to the Lord and promise God no more. You should reject the devil, renounce his works. Believe that Jesus died for you, shed his precious blood for you, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for your justification. Invite Jesus to your heart to be a Lord, your personal Savior. You shall be saved. And as you receive grace for righteousness, I'm assuring you, listening to me, that from henceforth, as good to live a righteous life, any promises you claim, your Father will bring it to pass. Remember, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Remember, if you be a son, your father is mindful of you. If you be a daughter, I want to let you know, your father is mindful of you. He has a will concerning you. And that is the word of God and his promises. Praise the Lord. So you are not poor. And if you are not saved, give your life to Jesus today, you will be among those whose names are contained in the will. Whom this will have been written for, go ahead and claim them, they must be fulfilled. Amen. So as I round up, search your life. A Christian is not a sinner, a sinner is not a Christian. I want to remind you. My Bible tells me in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9 says, 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for the seed of God remained to him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, listen to me. If you're asking me what is sin, 1 John chapter 5, verse 17, it says, All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. Look at the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know you not? That unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers, nor themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Those that live this kind of life, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are among those that are unbelief, you have unbelief, unforgiveness, 
selfishness, hatred, envy, backbiting, murmuring, bitterness, and keeping malice, bearing grudge, lusting after evil thing, covetousness, love of money, love of the world. Repent and promise God no more. Those that wallow in insincerity, unfaithfulness, and blasphemy, repent and amend your ways. I don't know the evil you are into. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you involved into, you know, idol? You make idol. You belong to secret court, open court, marine court, witchcraft court, international local court, campus court. Renounce them, either their property and burn them. Or you, you know, you're among those that fall after marine spirit or witchcraft spirit. Renounce them. They are their property and burn them. Or maybe you're into, you're among those people that are into going to native doctors to make sham or divination or pan reading or consulting the dead, my friend, renounce that evil. Ask for the mercy. God will show you mercy. Please search your life. If you are into stealing, picking pocket, and robbery, if you are among those that burglary, you break home of people, and those into fraud, do black people, white people, or government, repent and ask for the mercy of God. God will show you mercy. And if you have done those things, if you are giving offering at church, we don't need your money. I mean, you are ways. I don't know the evil you are into. Those involved into masturbation, homosexual, lesbianism, gay. Those involved in adultery and fornication, these are abomination. You are sin against God, against uh, humanity. I mean, you are ways. Are you among those people that are involved into prostitution, private or public prostitution? That is evil. Or you enter abortion, kill unborn baby, or you end abortion, repent and ask for the mercy of God. Or it could be that you are among those people that are into hired assassin, into, you know, a ritual killing, or involved into terrorism, or kidnapping and killing, repent and amend their ways. Promise God no more. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Such your life. I don't know the wickedness and into those fighting and quarreling, beating their wife and disobedient their husband and stubbornness. Repent and ask for the mercy of God. I don't know the evil into those that give bribe and take bribe, those that agent of corruption. Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do it no more. Those into smuggling and mend their ways. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Now it's acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Such your life. And if you are among those people listening to me, you are among those people that take snuff, smoke cigarettes, Indian hemp, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, repent and say, no more. I will not touch it. I will not sell it. I will not buy it for people. Or you take alcoholic drinks, 1% or half percent, Look out foreign walls. Repent and promise God no, or you sell it. Please, I mean, they will close that evil. Don't poison people. Or maybe among those that marry and divorce. Or you're into polygamous married, have three wives, or you know, you are dead, dead wife. My friend, listen to me. Do restitution before it's too late. You need to make sure from today, if you have left your husband, your right husband, return back to him. And if you send away your first wife, bring her back. And if you're second or third or fourth wife, pack your load and go. And if you have three wives, remove the second and third wife. Return your first wife until they do your part. Look at the Bible in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them man and favor? And said, For this cause, so a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and then to him shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more to him but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So, marriage is between a man and a woman, not a man and a man, a woman and a woman. That's gay, that is wickedness, that's abomination. Don't do it anymore. Marriage is not with three wives, two husbands, it is between a man and a woman. Two persons comes together and become one. And until they do your part, I mean their ways. And all you that goes into makeup, paint your hands and paint your leg and paint your mouth and paint your eyes and paint your body, that is sin. 
We put extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, attachment, and we don't pay me an earring or jewelry or bango. You make up your body. That is sin. Or you bleach your body and become yellow overnight. Or your young man that do jelly call, rough hair, scattered hair. You plate your head. Or you, or you put marks, tattoos in your body. That's sin. I mean, you are ways. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know the wickedness you are into. I mean, you are ways. All those people that dress, they expose their nakedness to seduce, to kill. That's wickedness. Cover your body properly well. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. My Bible tells me in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, when they are spoiled, what shall they do? Do they go after paint, after ornament? Whenever a woman or young man has spoiled, they begin to make up. I mean, you are where it's in Psalm 1, that nine, verse 14 says, God has fearfully and wonderfully made you and marvelous are the works of God. I don't know the, if we are into My Bible tells me the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I mean, your ways. Now it's acceptable that tomorrow may be too late. I know the honor of your life. Do something before it is too late. And all of you that are wearing men's garments, why are you a woman? Or woman's garment, why are you a man? That's abomination. You must not dress like that anymore because nothing that defied the abominable that shall enter the kingdom of God in Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pantone into a man. And to the man, put on woman's garment. For all that do so, abomination unto the Lord thy God. Abominable people cannot enter heaven. Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars that have their part in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Check it. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Remember, now it's acceptable that tomorrow will be too late. I have spoken this word not to condemn you. Or to bring conviction of what is sin, sin is all about. So, God is willing to show you mercy. And also, look at this place in the Bible. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 10, God said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So, my brothers and sisters, remember that blood that is, is spoken there is not the blood that God is demanding from us because it was in the Old Testament, it was the blood of Anima that was shed there. And it was a symbol for the blood of Jesus which to come in the New Testament. And listen to me. If you look at the book of John chapter 1 verse 29. John chapter 1. You will see the actual blood. Verse 29. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the lamp of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus is that lamp. And taketh away the sin of the world. That's what the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, that gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood, he said, It is finished. Now, if you look at John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. And in John chapter 10, verse 10b, he said, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And if you look at the book of John chapter 8, verse 36, he said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And in John chapter 1, verse 12, he said, But as many as received him, to them gave he power. They become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. I want to let you know, as many that shall receive Jesus today, their lives shall be transformed. They shall become a new creature. They will receive the power of sonship. Second Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And look at this place. 
in Romans chapter 10 verse 37, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Please rise up and let us pray. Rise up. Pray. And don't forget, acting upon his word. Everybody go before the Lord in true confession, repentance, and act upon his word, remind him his word, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Tell the Lord, I have come. The Lord said, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy land, and I will give you rest. Tell the Lord, I have come. Show me mercy. Save me. I need rest, my soul. I need eternal life. Everybody pray. Heavenly Father, I ask for mercy, O oh God. On behalf of each and everyone that is hearing me, everyone that is praying now, whatsoever they have done, Father, in your wrath, remember mercy. Lord, forgive and cleanse them and save them and transform their life. In Jesus' name we pray. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jehovah, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jehovah, I am sorry. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. Amen. Place your hand upon your chest and pray for you. That person that is into enmity with somebody, forgive that person and the Lord will forgive and heal you. And you also that is into a secret court, renounce that all practices and ask God to show your mercy. That person that is always quarreling with your neighbor, stop that evil, repent and amend your ways. The Lord will show you mercy. Now, I want to remind you that individual involved in masturbation and you're thinking, uh, how can you stop? You just confess and repent. Today, that you call for masturbation shall be broken in Jesus' name. And I want to pray for you. And it's too homosexual. Don't do it anymore. Renounce it. God will break that yoke and salvation shall be yours. All of you involved in adultery and fornication and those practicing witchcraft, going to native doctor, repent to them and say, God, I'm sorry. The Lord will show you mercy. Like you that is stealing, ask for mercy of God. The Lord will show you mercy. All unrighteousness is sin. What you need to do now, keep your hands up and sing this song. I surrender. I surrender up. I surrender. I surrender up. up to Jesus. Let the Savior. I surrender. I surrender up. And keep your hands up and pray for your Father in glory. It is never your will that any soul should perish. Whatever they have done against you, against humanity, known and unknown to them, in your wrath, remember mercy. Amen. Oh Lord, I pray for this one, especially this person that committed abortion. Father, mercy, oh Lord. Lord, mercy, oh Lord. I present every one of them whatsoever they have done. Father, every yoke and power on sin, I command to be broken in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. And from henceforth, I plead the blood of Jesus. I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus. Cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. Amen. I plead the blood of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus. And I pray for these ones sanctify their heart make them pure give them grace for purity in Jesus name spirit of the living God take over their soul empower them to live according to their will their word in Jesus name in Jesus wondrous name we pray